인간의 머리를 빼앗아 버립니다. The Maxim anime series and two live action movies in the mix. But here's where things get interesting. While they're separate stories, the differences between Parasite, The Grey and Parasite, The Maxim are pretty cool. Here's the kicker. Without Parasite, The Grey's ending, which brings a major manga character into the mix, this 2024 Netflix K drama would have been pretty detached from the source material, aside from the whole Parasite concept. But with Shinichi Izumi showing up in Parasite, The Grey, it's more than just a standalone adaptation. It's like a spin-off that's still rooted in the same world as Shinichi's tale. Haha, <laughs> before we delve into the inner workings of your brain, or before a parasite decides to drop in on me, let me clue you in on something cool. There's this channel I'm pretty keen on called Ya Boy Rock Lee Reactions. If you're into anime, K-pop, or just about anything entertainment related, it's your go-to hub. So here's the deal with Parasite, The Grey. While it shares the same world as Parasite, this Netflix K-drama shakes things up by setting its story in South Korea instead of Japan. And get this, it's not about Shinichi Izumi like the original. It follows a whole new set of characters with the spotlight on Jong Soo-in, played by Jon so ni In Parasite, The Grey, Jon so nis character Soo-in faces a near-death experience early on, only to be saved by one of the parasitic creatures that have infiltrated Earth. Sound familiar? It's kind of like what happened to Shinichi in the original story. Now let's talk cast. We've got John So Ni as Jong Su In, Ku Kyo Hwan as Seol Kang Woo, Lee Jung Hyun as Choi Jun Kyung, and the list goes on. But here's the thing. Aside from a cameo by Shinichi Izumi in episode 6, none of the manga's characters make an appearance in Parasite, The Grey. The show acknowledges that the parasite invasion isn't just happening in Japan. There are critters all over the globe. So while Su In's story is unfolding in Parasite, The Grey, it's likely happening around the same time as Shinichi's adventures. And hey, all the same rules apply, like that strand of hair test. It's like Parasite, but with a fresh Korean twist. With that being said, in Parasite, The Grey, the whole parasite situation unfolds a bit differently compared to the anime. Here's the scoop. All the parasites show up on Earth at the same time, just like in Parasite, the Maxim. But in this Korean spin-off, things kick off in South Korea, and boy does it start with a bang. As soon as the parasites make contact with humans, chaos erupts. One of them launches a vicious attack in a crowded area, resulting in dozens of casualties, all caught on camera. The DJ involved in the incident becomes ground zero for Team Grey's investigation, but only a select few know the full extent of what went down. Now here's where it gets interesting. While it took a while for the authorities to catch on in Parasite, the Maxim, in the Grey, they're on it from the get-go. Thanks to some quick thinking and a cover-up story, they managed to keep the public in the dark and form Team Grey to handle the situation. So, yeah. Things escalate pretty quickly in this Korean adaptation compared to the original manga. Now, a juicy tidbit for those who might not be in the loop. In Parasite, the Maxim, there wasn't anything like Team Grey. Sure, there were some agents sniffing around and a committee handling the Parasite situation in Japan, but Team Grey was a whole new addition brought in by Parasite, the Grey. This fresh concept added a whole new layer to the Parasite universe, with Team Grey being Korea's response to the Parasite invasion. Led by Choi Jun Kyung, they were on the front lines, collaborating with local law enforcement to track down the Parasite organization forming in the shadows. Now let's compare notes. While the original Parasite manga dove deep into Shinichi's journey and his evolving worldview, Parasite. The Grey took a different route. 
It focused more on the intense game of cat and mouse between the Parasite organization and Team Grey. Sue In, caught in the crossfire, found herself pulled into the chaos, whether she liked it or not. With Parasite, the Grey having a shorter runtime compared to the anime, Team Grey acted as a clever tool to keep the story on track and pack a punch in every episode. One noticeable difference we can't overlook is how Heidi operates in Parasite, the Grey compared to Miji in Parasite, the dynamic between their hosts, Suin and Shinichi, and their respective Parasites couldn't be more distinct. In Parasite, Miji couldn't completely take over Shinichi's brain, resulting in a sort of coexistence where Miji functioned as Shinichi's arm. While Miji did enhance Shinichi's physical abilities, the Parasite was limited to controlling only that specific part of his body. On the other hand, Heidi came close to seizing control of Suin's brain but was thwarted because Suin was on the brink of death. Consequently, Heidi can fully possess Suin's body, but only temporarily. Unlike Miji, Heidi doesn't emerge from a specific body part and can only manifest when Suin is unconscious. The communication between Suin and Heidi is minimal compared to that between Shinichi and Miji, who dialogue. Unlike Miji, who prioritize survival even at the cost of Shinichi's limbs, Heidi doesn't exhibit the same aggressive behavior. An important aspect to note is the unique relationship between Suin and Heidi in Parasite, the Grey, which differs significantly from Shinichi and Miji's dynamic. In the Netflix K-drama, Heidi is portrayed as Suin's alter ego, essentially two distinct individuals sharing the same body. Unlike Shinichi and Miji, who could communicate directly, Suin and Heidi could only interact through written notes left for each other. Heidi's initial introduction to Suin was through her cell phone camera, adding to the unique nature of their relationship. Moreover, Heidi lacks a conventional parasite form with separate eyes like Miji. Instead, she emerges from Suin's face during attacks, but does not engage in real-time conversation with her host. Another notable difference lies in how Heidi treats Suin compared to Miji's behavior towards Shinichi. From the outset, Suin's parasite chose to support her host and never posed a threat or acted against her or her loved ones. In contrast, Miji often opposed Shinichi's wishes, prioritizing survival, even if it meant endangering him by severing his limbs to conceal their true nature. Unlike a pet, Miji operated solely on the instinct to survive, regardless of the consequences for Shinichi. While Parasite featured remarkable fight scenes, Parasite, the Grey boasts a higher intensity of action across its runtime. Notably, the K-drama incorporates not only Parasite battles, but also clashes between soldiers and Parasites, aligning with its focus on Team Grey's investigation. Suin's journey involves confronting not only the Parasites, but also human adversaries before ultimately challenging the Parasite leader. Moreover, Parasite. The Grey delves into deeper themes through its exploration of a Parasite organism's attempt to dominate humanity, mirroring its source material. However, the K-drama navigates distinct thematic territory from the original manga. While Parasite pondered the significance of individual life forms and centered on Shinichi's perspective, Parasite, the Grey explores themes of community and the societal impact of organized human efforts to survive and thrive. In Parasite, the Grey, the antagonist aims to infiltrate vital human institutions, prompting reflections on the significance of community structures and the peril posed by corrupt leaders exploiting their influence for personal gain. This thematic departure from Parasite underscores the K-drama's unique narrative trajectory and its broader examination of societal dynamics.